Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. A prison system in crisis, our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Wednesday, August 21st from the CMC News Center in Bridgetown. I'm Dawn Paris. Good evening. Trinidad and Tobago's Commissioner of Prisons, Gerard Wilson, is admitting that the Twin Island Republic's prison system is in chaos. In January this year, Wilson was, was quoted by a local newspaper as saying that while the prison service needed additional funding, the financial situation could not be described as a crisis. But seven months later, with two prison escapes already for the year and increased death threats on the lives of prison officers and actual attacks on officers, Wilson says there is a crisis, but of a different sort, the safety and security of prison officers, and it has now reached a crisis point. Speaking on TV6's Morning Edition program on Tuesday, the prison's commissioner said the situation is now untenable. And he says the prison service has done all it can internally, and the crisis requires urgent intervention. I know that the prison service, I am totally fed up of it. I am, I am looking at the prison service now as the new punching bag in the sense that as soon as, as inmates are uncomfortable or anything, then they target the prison service. In fact, it, it was said by one inmate that when things happen, whether it's, it's a director from the police or whether we get information from the intelligence community, the prison officers will be targeted. Just Sunday, the home of a prison officer was shot at, and that came on the heels of threats made on social media, calling for the killing of any two prison officers. Wilson disclosed that there were threats from the inside as well. He said inmates also had prison officers afraid, and they were being given little to no protection. We have the same type of behavior from outside entering the prison, so that, that there are some very influential persons who come into the prison and still try to manipulate and, 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 and you know, send threats to officers. And, and to be honest with you, I feel at this time that officers are more afraid of, of not complying to those influential inmates than, than going before. Meanwhile, the Trinidad government is being challenged to find a different approach to fighting crime. The call has come from an opposition MP who warns that the country could easily surpass last year's murder rate if current trends continue. We hear more from CNC3's Jesse Ramdale. The opposition's shadow minister for national security is giving police commissioner Gary Griffith high marks for his achievements after one year in office. But he is concerned that if other parts of the justice system are not sorted out, those gains would be for naught. Charles argues that the time has come for the overall crime-fighting machinery to work according to serious deliverables for which each element can be held accountable. Set measurable targets. You bring all the stakeholders together and say, can we achieve that uh, measurable statistic? Or is it unrealistic? And if they agree that we could achieve it, the question is, the second phase is tell us what resources you need. And the challenge of our government at the time would be to, to get those resources to the police, the TPS, and other institutions that have a, an impact on the crime situation. I'm glad that you and mentioned... And once they get the resources that they have asked for, and they commit to achieve those targets, the third part of the, the process is to hold them accountable. Zinaprima MP is calling for a proper management system to guide the crime reduction strategy and maintains the current strategy being used by the Rowley administration to battle crime is all wrong. 
He argues the focus on enacting new legislation that is not informed or advised by data is having the effect of increasing the overall prison population to whom major rehabilitation efforts should be targeted. But this is not happening as it should. He also emphasizes the importance of social interventions for at-risk inner-city males. I'm blaming our entire society. Yeah. Our society, we have failed the at-risk youth. So if, if for, for whatever reason a, a, a person's father is in prison and his mother is on coke, what, what systems are in place to identify this fellow and get the resources of the state to him so that he could be rehabilitated? In other news, opposition legislators in Haiti make a move to block the ratification of Prime Minister-designate Fritz William Michel. The legislators have called on the President of the Chamber of Deputies, Gary Bordeaux, to postpone all activities related to the presentation of the Prime Minister and his Cabinet to the Chamber of Deputies, deputies for his Statement of General Policy, which had been scheduled for Friday. They say he is ineligible to be Prime Minister. The opposition legislators say the Superior Court of Auditors and Administrative Litigation had never cleared Michel of his duties as Chief Accountant at the Ministry of the Economy and Finance, which he served from 20, 2009 to 2011. And he would need to be discharged for those duties, and the court is still undertaking a thorough review of his management of the state finances, and a favorable judgment is not guaranteed. The deputies say there is also the problem of discharge for some ministers that were nominated as well, as they allege some have evaded taxes. Michelle has named an 18-member cabinet equally divided between men and women. Ghana's opposition leader Barat Jagdio is being accused of being a political bully who is not concerned about political stability in the country. The accusation comes from David Hines, executive member of the Working People's Alliance, the WPA, which is a junior partner in the coalition government. Hines says the opposition leader's attitude towards national political harmony is very concerning, especially for young people who are already alienated from politics. We get more in this News Source Guyana report. Of the Working People's Alliance, Dr. David Hines, has accused the presidential candidate of the People's Progressive Party, Air Finale, of hiding behind the party's general secretary, Mara Jagdio, who he says is Mr. Ali's political godfather. At a recent press conference, Dr. Hines said that while the opposition leader has been acting as a bully with his weekly press conferences and public statements, the man who wants to be the next president has been acting more like a ghost. We can't focus on a ghost too much. You know, Mr. Finale is a ghost. We don't see him. He's there, you're right with what you say. But the man who is, who is there in the front, who is Mr. Jack Dio's um, front man, has to be the person that we respond to because that's what our supporters are telling us in the community. They're saying they wake up every morning and they see this man's face, they hear this man's voice, and they're not hearing our voice. Dr. Hines made it clear that when Ali comes forward, the focus will shift to him. But for now, there needs to be more focus on Mr. Jack Dio, and people ought to be reminded of his time in office. Yes, we understand that ultimately Mr. Orphan Ali is going to be the presidential candidate, and we should focus on him, but what are we going to focus on? Are we going to focus on the fact that he has problems with his um, his, 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 um, Qualification. qualifications and his and his thing? Are we going to focus on? He's not. He's not up front. He's not saying anything. He's not advancing any policy. He's there behind the scenes. And so, when he comes forward, we will certainly focus on him. But for now, we will focus on his political godfather. The Working People's Alliance is a junior partner in the coalition government. Dr. Hines said the party wants to have a bigger voice in the new government and has decided to stick with the coalition for the next election. Staying in Guyana, the government says it's training teachers to equip themselves with the necessary skills to teach English as a second language to children of Venezuelan migrants. The Ministry of Education is working with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to develop educational interventions. We get more in this HGP News Report. The 800 migrant children registered in schools in Ghana the Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, has been joining forces to develop educational interventions to improve learning and communication skills of Venezuelan refugee children. 
17 teachers from Region 1 and two from the city will begin training later this week as part of the initiative that is expected to benefit eight communities in Region 1. UNHCR representative on the multi-stakeholder committee, Ms. Cicely Guerrero, made this announcement Monday at a stakeholder meeting which was held at the Department of Citizenship. The committee is tasked with monitoring the arrival of Venezuelan migrants in Guyana. The training, which is being conducted in Mabaruma Region 1, will last until the end of August. The two Georgetown-based teachers, she said, will be trained as trainers. These teachers will be tasked with training their colleagues when and wherever the need arises. Ghana has been one of the countries in the region to open its doors to Venezuelan migrants fleeing their homeland, which has been afflicted by political turmoil over the last few years. Given the positive impacts made in Burima Waini through the pilot project, the two entities are now looking to roll out the project in Kuyuni Mazruni. It will target three communities in its initial phase. Up next, more water problems for Jamaicans. Stay with us. Coming up, eye-catching art, a mix of cultures on display in one location. It's time for Carafesta. The best of Barbados outside of Barbados, Antigua and Barbuda get showcased to the world. Plus, an east-west fusion of sound. It's all next on Caribbean Passport on this station. emergency, you can help yourself and others by looking, listening, and linking. Looking because you want to see if the person has some signs that is in distressing. Looking for the symptoms, how best you can support the person. And then listening, because listening is very important. Listening with your ears, listening with your eyes. If you do that well, then you'll be able to link them to the appropriate resources. Be ready, look, listen and link. Welcome back. Jamaicans are being warned to brace for more water shortages as the wor worsening drought conditions continue to take a toll on major catchment facilities. The National Water Commission, the NWC, said the disruptions would affect consumers in northeastern parishes estimated at more than a million people as 29 of its systems in St. Anne, Portland and St. Mary are affected by the dry spell. It warned that with some sources completely dried up, it's a challenge for it to effectively service its customers in those parishes. The NWC said that as a result, several mitigation measures have been implemented, including supply regulation, pressure management, storage building and trucking. Jamaica is among several Caribbean countries facing a drought situation. The Caribbean Institute for Metrology and Hydrology has warned that drought conditions in the region will continue in several countries until next month. A new tropical storm has formed in the Atlantic north of Bermuda, but it currently poses no threat to land. Chantal, which formed late on Tuesday, is only the third named storm of the Atlantic season, but meteorologists expect activity to pick up in the run-up to the statistical peak on September 10th. At 5 p.m. on Wednesday, Chantal, located 515 miles south-southeast of Cape Race, Newfoundland, was carrying winds of 40 miles per hour with higher gusts and heading east at 20 miles per hour. Forecasters expect Chantal to turn towards the south southeast with a decrease in forward speed by Thursday and gradual weakening is anticipated with Chantal expected to become a tropical depression in a couple of days time. Experts say it's unusual for a storm to develop fifth so far north but water temperatures are running three to four degrees Fahrenheit above average in the North Atlantic. 
This week in Newsline Business, Republic Financial Holdings Limited commits to supporting St. Kitts and Nevis after acquiring Scotiabank's operations. And we also look at the current status of the Caribbean's sugar industry. Mary Claire Williams has the details. The St. Kitts and Nevis government says it has received assurance from Republic Financial Holdings Limited that it is committed to working with authorities in Bastyr after it acquires Scotiabank operations. The Twin Island Federation is one of several Caribbean countries where RFHL plans to acquire Scotia operations. Prime Minister Timothy Harris met with representatives of Republic Bank on Tuesday. A government statement quotes the bank's managing director, Nigel Batiste, as saying that they understand that one of the main concerns is the bank's willingness to support the main drivers of the economy, including the Citizenship by Investment Initiative. Baptiste says they need more information to better understand the CBI, but the bank is open to supporting it as it is crucial to the economy's success. Republic is looking to acquire Scotiabank's operations in Antigua, Anguilla, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and St. Martin. The Sugar Association of the Caribbean is making a case for the protection of the region's crop. In an interview with Newsline Business, spokesman for the association, William Neal, lamented the challenges being faced by sugar producers to secure a regional market. Barbados, Belize, Guyana and Jamaica are the four remaining sugar producers in the region. Neal told CMC that the region's product is of high quality and it should be protected. If we're talking about CSME working and about regional, um, regionalism, then there are some things where we have to support um, the regional producers. We talk about food security, um, but yet we may not want to use what is produced in the Caribbean. We always feel as if though um, things produced in the Caribbean and CARICOM are inferior and that they should not be um, used in anything that we want to um, sell within the region or outside of the region. We beg to differ and we think and we know that the sugar that is being produced currently in CARICOM can be used. Despite the current challenges, he believes that a solution can be found. We remain optimistic that as a producer within CARICOM, that under the revised treaty, that we should be guaranteed our rights to actually sell into the CARICOM region. Why should we be importing extra regional sugar from Guatemala, from Honduras, from Colombia, to use as an input in our products that have duty-free access throughout CARICOM, but we don't want to use uh, inputs from within CARICOM itself. Belize will host a sugar stakeholders meeting to discuss the way forward for the industry later this year. Mary Claire Williams, Newsline Business. Ahead in sport, another call for consistency from West Indies captain Jason Holder on the eve of the Test Series against India. You'll be right back. Okay, let's get this get you going, and I'm going to get your weight. So you want to start off by weighing. Every morning, you've got to weigh yourself. And you'll right. see yourself drop every day. We won't tell anybody what we'll show this. No, no, no. We'll tell you afterwards, okay? We'll get the reveal, all right? Okay, great. You can step off. Mm. I've written that down. You got a chart I don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> so it's so great. So I'm writing it down. Okay, good. All right, now stand up for me. Oh, you got to do this other stuff. Now. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island. Quite popular as a vacation hotspot is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. It's gonna be something special. We're gonna come together. It's a meeting of the islands. 
There will never be a time like this one. We come to connect, share, and invest. Turn the eyes of the world to carry fest. Tell the cultures to come and bring the best. Carry fest the 14. West Indies captain Jason Holder is repeating calls for his team to be consistent ahead of the start of the test series against India on Thursday. The Caribbean men are going into the opening test at the Vivian Richards Cricket Ground in Antigua, hoping to end their wretched record against the visitors. No test wins in nearly two decades. Speaking at the recently held West Indies Players Association Awards, Holder stressed the importance of the team playing as a collective. I think we just want to be consistent. Um, you know, we've had a really good start to the year, obviously, and I think this group has been closer in it for the last two and a half years. Um, you know, there have been one or two players dropping out and one or two players coming in, but I think the nucleus of the squad has been the same, and, and I think that's, that speaks well for the performance of the team. Uh, and I just think for us, we just got to take it stage by stage. I try not to get too far ahead um, and just nail in on the process. You know, I always speak about the process in the group, and... We've been doing a lot of talking as a group, and I'm just trying to put together our heads and, and find solutions to, to many problems which we face. I think that's the, the, the mantra for most teams, uh, per se. You know, you just look for solutions and look for solutions not only as individuals, but as a group. Meanwhile, West Indies selectors have included Barbadian pacer Miguel Cummings as a replacement for Kimo Paul in the 13-man squad for the first match of the My Team 11 series. Cummings made his debut three years ago against India in Jamaica. He had a memorable second match in St. Lucia when he had match figures of 9 for 102, including a career best 6 for 48 in the second innings. All rounder Paul will miss the first test because of a left ankle injury. Cricket West Indies says he will remain in Antigua to continue his rehabilitation. In football, little known to Nadadian Andre Fortune scored twice as North Carolina FC reeled off their third win in four outings with a 5 0 crushing of Pittsburgh Riverhounds SC in the United Soccer League last weekend. Playing at the Salines Stadium at Wakimed Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina, the U.S. born 23 year old Fortune put the host ahead on the brink of halftime before scoring again in the second half. The victory sent North Carolina fifth in the standings on 43 points, level on points with fourth placed Indy 11, and now just four points adrift of Eastern Conference leaders New York Red Bulls 2. With the defeat, Riverhounds remained six on 41 points after suffering their first defeat in five outings on the heels of four straight wins. Moving back to the region, a top Jamaican football club, Waterhouse, is hoping to be match ready when they take on their Costa Rican counterparts in the qualifiers for the CONCACAF Champions League. In this report from TVJ's Jermaine Brown, we hear that head coach Marcel Gale is hopeful about the team's readiness, even though they've been called out for duty at an unusual time. CONCACAF Champions League, Waterhouse must at least reach the semifinals. They'll begin on Thursday at the round of 16 in a home and away tie to Herediano. According to coach Marcel Gale, it's an unusual time to be playing a match like this, as this time of the year, they will still be in pre-season training. We know that we're not fully um, at our 100 right now, because, you know, uh, our pre-season now, um, start um, July, July, August, I mean, a month are close here to the Premier League. But I uh, know in, in this international uh, game, we start a little bit early, and hopefully uh, what, we, what we put in um, is enough. We, we, we know that we have the quality, uh, but... The readiness and sharpness, we probably are not that fully sharp, but we're, we're definitely ready for, to play. And Gale and company will not be going into this game without doing their background checks. They've done their homework on the Costa Ricans. We know that they are, they are technically sound. Um, they, they, they are well organized team. I think they are well coached. Um, we, we, we do a little background work on, on them ourselves. Um, we put some things in place. And hopefully, I say, on the match they come, you can go and execute. 
Finally, a hard-fought battle between Jason Ray Khalil and Christian Jeffrey resulted in the Guyanese pair winning gold over Barbados in the country's first Senior Caribbean Squash Championships. Both players shared their experience after winning Guyana's first doubles title. Newsroom's Akeem Green also spoke with the squash women who were not so successful. Despite both were unable to practice together to build chemistry, they complemented each other quite well to come from behind and topple Barbadians Kamal Cumberbatch and Sean Simpson, 3-11, 11-8 and 11-10. The goal is of great significance since it is the first year for the senior championship has implemented doubles and it goes a great way in helping Guyana to cop the overall title. It, everything pulled out well, you know, I was a bit injured after coming out um, from a Canadian Nationals in racing, mm -hmm. but I was really looking forward to playing with Jason. We played at the Panam Games, I think, what, three years ago? Yeah. And I thought our games contributed to each other well. And I mean, winning for Guyana for the first time holding doubles was, was incredible in front of your home crowd. It's a huge joy in front of the home crowd. Um, it's a huge honor as well. Myself and Christian, this, I believe this is both of our first um, Caribbean titles. Whether it be in singles or doubles, it's the same amount. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first time they're introducing the doubles to, to this event. And it's even sweeter because it's at home. It was a huge battle, but we played off, like, like my partner said, we played off each other's strengths and just covered where, where we needed to. And we hung in there and got the win. However, the Guyanese pair of Taylor Fernandes and Ashley Cahill lost to their Bayesian counterparts, Megan Bess and Amanda Haywood, 5-11 and 9-11. From the onset, topping the Bayesian duo was no easy task, but they fought extremely hard. Even on the injured leg, Cahill was still lunging to retrieve balls in what was a selfless display by both players. Um, I think we played really well. Um... We started off a little slow in the beginning, but then we found the rhythm coming down to the end. Uh, I think if we had won that second game, we could have gone differently. I was hesitant to play at first because of my injury. I have a fractured ankle, but I'm fully supported in, the, in this loop. Um, it was a good, I thought we played pretty well. Um, also, we moved well, so I don't think movement was the issue. I think it was just um, at the key points, we kind of went for a little too much and that, that kind of threw us off a little bit. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of how we played. And that's the sport, we'll be right back. Everybody on the beach was just spellbound. Nobody thought it was possible. God gave me this passion to surf and it wasn't like that passion had been taken too. How she's been able to adapt and be the powerhouse that she is, I don't know how she does it. She trained her butt off. It takes a lot of strength and willpower to get that one success. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. A recap of the day's major developments, Trinidad and Tobago's Commissioner of Prisons, Gerard Wilson, says the prison system is in crisis. 
And in sport, West Indies captain Jason Holder calls for consistency from his men ahead of the test series against India. And that's Caribbean News Line. For news and sport around the clock, subscribe to cannonnews.com. And for more of our programming, log on to caribvision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow, but from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.